Hi there and welcome to a new video in which I want to tell you how you can actually ideate a GoDot project or actually any kind of game. I'm going to show you the formula that allowed me to create all these games including games that I created uh, for Voodoo or actually as part of a program that they have in which they allow you to test your games uh, but of course in order for Voodoo to test your games you have to comply with some um, rules that they put such as obviously having a good game so I want to show you the complete game design um, process that I followed in order to create all these games that you're seeing over here and more stuff and if you don't know yet, if you don't know yet, Buru, okay, this is a game development company. It's one of the biggest ones right now. As you can see, they have huge downloads, a huge revenue, a huge number of monthly active users. So indeed, if I have been able to test three games with them, it means that you should listen to me, I believe. Because something that they really uh, always remark and, and they all, all the time want to tell you is that most successes come from the game design and not from the programming itself of the, of the game because the game can be perfectly polished, the game can work perfectly fine but if the game design isn't uh, completely the best one that, that could be, if the game idea is not clear enough, uh, whatever even though the programming could be amazing, the game may not go as well as planned so that's basically why the game design is so, so important I'm going to show you different ways of doing this uh, with some real examples but of course as, as always in lots of things there are multiple ways of getting this done and will really depend on your uh, specific project okay but in general okay what you're going to be having is in some kind of document which you can create in a for example notion which is super amazing to do these things um, because it provides lots of design tools, well not design tools, but tools that allow you to, to write text, okay, it's quite similar to, at least to write text in uh, to Microsoft Word or Google Docs, but it does have some advantages, so if you want to use it, you can go ahead, if not, you can write these things in a Google Doc or Microsoft Word or even in paper, so something that you always define whenever you want to prototype a game or to just think of the game idea, so you always just uh, write the genre of the game. So either if it is an RPG game, a match three puzzle, a battle game, whatever. Now, depending on the exact like way that you like to do it, sometimes I like to do it like with longer phrases and just writing text as in this example. Sometimes I like to be a little bit more organized. I will just show you once again these different structures, then you will see which one you like the most. So, for example, in this sentence, over here, I did a quick overview, okay, of the uh, game um, or uh, the, the, the game mechanics uh, themselves. So, overview, okay, once again, I'm going to see multiple ways of doing this overview because, well, maybe it's too much text uh, in just one paragraph, but you can kind of start to see some of the things um, that contain it. So, for example, this first sentence, it tells you about the actual overview so this the first sentence will be the actual overview but then inside of it you have lots of things uh, so from here this would be like uh this would be basically some kind of win condition or or the loop of the game basically matching three hammer orbs might break a wall while matching three bridges would create an actual bridge so actually in this other sentence what we have is a win and lose condition since win would be matching and losing would be the different obstacles okay that are mentioned over here such as um, a cliff and the win condition would be the the uh, the bridge for example so once again this maybe is not a super structured um, game design document but it is going to be quite easy if this is the first time that you are ideating a game. This was actually one of the first uh, prototypes that I created. Well, not prototypes, but one, one of the first game design documents that I actually created, like, like in, at least in this format. Um, so to start off in game design, this format is perfectly fine, but well, you can see that it's not uh, super tidy. Um, here, I also talk about the loose condition uh, again. And once again, more information about, like, general about the game, that it's not pretty well organized, but this format is, once again, quite good for beginners in game design, so it is quite easy just to write sentences, <laughs> of course. 
and here just a comment okay about this overview something that in order to make this happen we have to do this for example we're talking about matching three hammers orbs might break a wall so if if this is true what it means is that well there should be hammers appearing on the dock so if we continue okay we'll see more information what is also amazing to have this is a pretty important thing to kind of have the preview okay of your game this can be either in an image in some kind of video um this is super simple drawing that i did in microsoft paint as you can see so it doesn't have to be something super complex you can use primitive shapes once again in in, in word for example to to do these things you can do it in paper and take a photo whatever you want but this really allows you to see okay how exactly do i want my game to uh, to look like and this will give you a much better idea of what you actually want to create now also something that you may want to include once again depending on uh, on on the purpose of the game in this case it was for a company so the main idea was to try to sell this game as much as possible well not to sell the game because it was completely free but to make it a potential game in which then could be more monetized and in those cases the innovation in it is key if you are a beginner game developer and you just want to make games for fun or to learn the really the, the real innovation may not really be that important of course it's always good to try to innovate in games to 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 um, to try to improve uh, your game design skills because if you innovate in something it means that you're a good g game designer but well here innovation is more at least in this type of project it's more meant to to allow us to sell the game a little bit more so for example the innovation would be here matching three specific elements at least this was the original idea because in some games the order in which you match the different objects doesn't really matter in this case the idea was that for example here if the obstacle that was coming to a character if this was i don't know uh let's say a rock it means that here in the dock you would have to match exactly that rocks and if you matched a i don't know hammers for example well then the player will lose some lives or whatever that idea was to make the player match specific objects once again here we are not judging if this was a good or by or by idea we are judging how to actually come to maybe better game ideas or how to organize the information okay because well maybe yes this idea was not the, the, the best one that's why also the game didn't look like that at the end but anyway and also something else that you may want to include is some inspirations or references you can just write the game, uh, the, the game name. Once again, you can put a screenshot of the game or some specific parts of the game that you like, etc. But in 99% of cases, you do have some form of inspiration. And I want to show you, this is the first example. Um, and I want to show you now a more organized way of, of doing the exact same thing uh, that I believe is much, much better, okay? So, in this case we have like the super long test that we used to have but a little bit more sectioned so in this case well the game genre i directly put okay battle this is a battle game and then i just uh, wrote there uh, some brief description or on 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 why the, the battle will consist on to a sick man that one one on each side of the screen and they would just fight then also something that you may want to put are the controls or the input in this case the player will move with a virtual joystick uh, you can also put the camera angle in this case was some some kind of top view but it, it didn't end up being a top view but you can start to see the camera view and also the camera view then you're actually going to be seeing it in the in the actual preview of the game but anyway it's also good to just put it there um then this is just some extra description about the game actually all these two paragraphs are extras okay or well, not extras themselves but description of the game or mechanics that i want to include in the game then you also have a win condition and a game over condition then it's, once again these are mechanics that i wanted to include so this is quite similar to what we had uh, over here and could be actually put in just one section but once again sometimes when you are creating game design documents your brain starts to work so rapidly that you just want to get things written down so that you don't miss them then of course if you have the time and you are willing to do it you should organize this this information better so okay all these things are mechanics so there should be a head that says mechanics or, or something like that but anyway once again that is not really going to to make a huge impact on your game success or or or, or your game itself or whatever also something that you can briefly 
mention is the progression of your game. That's something quite important. Once again, depending on the specific type of game that, that you are creating, but in lots of cases, progression is super important. For example, this was a battle game, so the progression was quite obvious. Uh, and in this case, I didn't want to innovate a lot, at least in progression. So we would have like a stronger opponent. Um, it would have, so what exactly does it mean that it has a stronger opponent? I broke it down here. So it would have more weight. It would have a more powerful gun. It would have more movement speed, etc. The idea is to avoid being like so broad with your answers here or the information. You, you try to be as specific as possible, or at least in things that you say, okay, uh, as I go by, stronger opponent, but what does it mean exactly to have a stronger opponent? I can break down there a couple of ideas. Um, and once again, this is just like an extra mechanic that maybe I wanted to add. And also here, more mechanics, okay? Um, so once again, as you can see, a game design document doesn't have to be that organized. It doesn't need to be like that. But well, of course, it is going to be much better if you have all this information organized. And in this case, these were simple and, and and not super complete games, maybe these were just minimum viable products or MVPs. So I didn't know how to be super organized, uh, but in a bigger project where you would have multiple pages and lots of information, you will need to be very organized, but that could be for another video. Once again, I put the references and here we have the exact same thing that we have, uh, that we used to have in the previous uh, GDD or given set document, which is the preview. Okay. So quite, quite simple. So taking all this into account, I created some kinds of uh, templates maybe for you, if you want to call it like that, okay? Uh, maybe summarizing all the information, okay? Once again, you can add more things, you can delete some of this. This is just uh, up to you, but well, this is kind of similar to a template. It's not completely the same, not, not even close to what actually Buru was asking us to provide in the game design document. But in reality, it's not just something from Buru, it's something that in any game game development company, they will ask you to do something like this. Um, so once again, it's a pretty uh, used uh, resource. And for this, I super quickly want to show you a Godot game that I created. It's a totally endless runner game. Uh, so that we have something to, to actually, well, actually use this template and show you how you can use it. So let's say that I wanted to create something like this. This would be my reference. So we'll just take a, a screenshot there. I don't know what you are currently seeing, but just give me a second. I will take that screenshot and I will just paste it over here so that we can see it. Uh, let me try to make it. Yes, there we go. A little bit bigger. There we go. Maybe something like that would be just fine. And let me now move it a little bit. So here we have like what we the reference or Yes, let's think of this as if this was like the, the final game that we have created and this would be the game design document that allowed us to create this game. So firstly, what I like to do is to section this a little bit better. So we have like the introduction. First, you have like an elevator pitch of what the game is. So um, for example, we could write this game is a totally endless runner game in which the player can move around. Uh, dodges obstacles and tries to survive. Okay, this is just a super like short example. The elevator pitch would just be one or two sentences that briefly describe uh, your game idea. Then the general of it. Well, I actually mentioned it again. It's not bad to 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 be emphatic, okay, and to do say some information multiple times. So it's the endless runner. If you have a unique selling point, okay, once again, if you if your aim is to create a game that uh, you want to get sales in or you want to sell or whatever, well, this is super important. In this case, the game idea or this game was not the idea to sell it. It was for a game development course. So the unique selling point, there, there was none or maybe the, the, the game juice or, or game feel because the game was quite polished in general. So that could be a unique selling point. Uh, the preview, well, was actually over here. You could try to draw something similar um, to, to just do something similar to this. So maybe the preview with the video or drawing could be the um, the dinosaur game from Chrome or something like that. And then, well, for the core gameplay, there are multiple things that you could include over here. The rules and mechanics. So, for example, um, the player moves with 
um, or actually the player has gravity, I don't know. Uh, the player dodges vehicles, I don't know, all these kind of things, input controls, in this case W, A, A S and D for the player to move around, win condition, here it would be, there would be none because it would be an endless game, the loose conditions would be basically collide with uh, a car in this case and for the extra well once again here you could put your references and if you wanted to actually put a game potential here you can write it's actually quite similar to the unique selling points so in reality here i didn't want to write a game potential i think i no i actually wanted to write here other mechanics uh or comments in general okay which and in this space you would put like for example what we have repeated like lots of times in previous documents just let me uh, I know I've lost literally everything, so let me try to find it. So, for example, here in other mechanics or comments, you would put like all these mechanics that didn't have an order. Well, you would put them there at the end. Once again, don't take this as a strict rule so, or something like that. Uh, this is just a pretty like modest example, okay? But you can do it however you want. The idea is that you have a clear structure before getting to code. And always remember that lots of times if what you want to create is a successful game or anything like that. Most cases it is not going to be because of the programming, but because of the game design, okay? Uh, because most of the games that you find out there on stores, they do work mostly perfectly fine. Uh, but the difference between a successful and a fail and a failure, um, it's just the game design, the, the game idea. So really pay attention to this master game design and you're going to be able to create much, much better games. I hope that this video has been helpful. And if you want to continue learning game development, go to or Unity, I have my own game development courses in the link down below. And using the link down below for limited time, you will have a huge discount. So instead of getting my courses for something like $45, you're going to be able to get them from some, for something like $12.99 approximately. So I really recommend that you hurry up because once again, maybe you click on the link and the coupon code has expired. So I have this Godot course, which as you can see has over 30 students, 4.8 reviews in over six ratings. It is just a six hour course, but the idea is to create the game that I showed you a second ago. So it's quite straight to the point and it also covers more advanced Godot topics. And if you want a complete a guide in unity of something like 22 hours once again for the same price and using the link down below you will be able to get it for something like 12 dollars it already has 21 students and they have not finished the course yet so that's why it has no ratings right now but once again this is a super comprehensive course that covers lots lots of concepts so it's really um a bargain to just get it for something like 12 dollars all the links with the coupon codes applied are in the description down below. But once again, hurry up because the coupon codes will expire soon. See you there. Enroll right now and bye bye.